Are you trying to pick up French again after a break in learning? Maybe you feel like you've forgotten most of your French over the years, or maybe you realize that you have some gaps in your French that you finally want to fill. If you've recently picked your interest in relearning, congratulations! I am delighted that you're here and I have many lessons to help you keep your brain working, refresh the French that you already know and update your knowledge with modern vocabulary. But first, let's cover the main mistakes that people make when deciding to relearn French so that you can avoid them on your learning journey. If you learned French at school years or maybe decades ago, it is very tempting to skip the first few level when coming back to the language. After all, you've been through this once and you probably remember most of it, right? Well, no, of course. Let's be honest, you probably forgot tons of rules of grammar and vocabulary and pronunciation and conjugation. And if you haven't, or just remember à peu près, à peu près, more or less, or kind of, à peu près, then you probably forgot some of them. Either way, you can get a lot of mileage out of going through these basics again first. That's the only way to get solid foundations, and this time it will be easier. Pour reprendre le français, to take up learning French again, I recommend using resources that will guide you through the beginner level. For this, I really like the excellent books of Clé International, especially for les débutants, les débutants, beginners, like Grammaire progressive du français, Grammaire progressive du français, and Vocabulaire progressif du français, Vocabulaire progressif du français. By the way, you'll find a link to all the resources mentioned in today's video in the blog post for the lesson. You will find the link below the video in the description. It is completely free. Once you have the basic rules of French grammar nailed down and some essential vocabulary, then you can gradually climb back to the intermediate or advanced level that you used to have. And that's exactly when you can avoid the second mistake. Learning textbook French is very valuable, and that's why it's often the meat of what you learned at school. You have to know the rules of the conjugation of the regular verbs, as well as a handful of irregular ones, starting with être, to be, avoir, to have, as well as pouvoir, can, prendre, to take, and more. Tenses, including le subjonctif, so that you can learn why you should say, for instance, je suis contente que tu sois là, I am happy you're here. Je suis contente que tu sois là, with the subjunctive, instead of je suis contente que tu es là, which is incorrect. How to build a negative sentence with ne pas, which you need even for the simplest of sentences, such as je ne suis pas sûr, I am not sure, je ne suis pas pas sûr. How to build a question with l'inversion, like le musée est-il ouvert? Le musée est-il ouvert? Or est-ce que, like est-ce que le musée est ouvert? Is the museum open? Est-ce que le musée est ouvert? And these basics also include French pronunciation, such as the difficult sounds of the U, of the French R, of the nasal vowels such as on, un and on. All this can be a bit overwhelming, but with good method and a bit of regular practice, it will give you a very solid foundation. And this will last for the rest of your learning journey. If you want, I have several lessons on each of these topics. You'll find the link to them in the blog post for today's lesson. But anyway, there is a problem with textbook French. That is not the real spoken French that you will hear in everyday conversations. Or even in movies, that is not the French that you will need to have a conversation. Correct French is not real French. So keep in mind that school French is not the same as everyday spoken French. The rules are a bit different, the words are not the same either, and even the pronunciation can change. At some point, you will have to learn the rules of spoken French. If not, you will have trouble understanding 
everything. And when you ask, you will sound formal and very stiff. That's largely what I've been trying to teach you for 10 years on Commune Française. I've been doing this on YouTube, on my website, and even in my specially structured programs, such as French vocabulary and pronunciation. This one is all about the essentials of spoken French. Eh oui! Yes, il y a des règles dans le français parlé. There are rules in spoken French. Il y a des règles dans le français parlé. Starting with how to use l'argot et les jurons. L'argot et les jurons. Slang and swear words. Of course, you will have to learn which slang is okay to use in common French and which words are actually very rude and you should not use. But other rules are more subtle. For instance, couper le ne, couper le ne, dropping the ne in ne pas. So for instance, the negative sentence, je ne suis pas sûr, I am not sure, je ne suis pas sûr, becomes je suis pas sûr in everyday spoken French. Je suis pas sûr. We drop the ne. If you say je ne suis pas sûr, it sounds that you are trying to be formal. And the rules apply to pronunciation as well. Like we often sauter le e, we swallow the e instead of pronouncing it in all the words. For instance, if we go back to our last sentence, we would actually say je suis pas sûr, je suis pas sûr, for I am not sure, je suis pas sûr. And it sounds much more like je suis pas sûr, je suis pas sûr. The same happens with the formal je ne sais pas, I don't know, je ne sais pas. That becomes je sais pas, je sais pas, je sais pas. That is not necessarily something that you will find written, but listen to how French people talk. They cut lots of vowels. Je sais pas moi. Unfortunately, because it's French, even these rules depend on your context. Even if you have solid foundations, even if you can speak French, don't panic if you don't understand French TV. Whether you've learned French in Provence in the 1970s as une jeune fille au père, une jeune fille au père, or for 10 years at school, 40 years ago, or even for six months at an internship in Belgium, there is always more to learn. Because the language has changed, because the context has changed, and because you have changed. Of course, there are always new words and expressions to learn every year. But it's also because you might have new interests and circumstances that you need a whole new area of French to say what you want to say. Maybe you need more vocabulary about your family to talk about your grandchildren. Or maybe you need some up-to-date French to understand French shows on Netflix. Or maybe the vocabulary of French sports to follow les Jeux Olympiques, les Jeux Olympiques, the Olympics in Paris in 2024. Or maybe you need to brush up on your formal French in order to follow une émission littéraire on TV. Anyway, learning the right vocabulary for your situation is really going to help you with conversations with French people. You will be able to express yourself as an adult and talk about the thing that you actually care about. I made several lessons on words that are all around useful in everyday spoken French like quoi, aller, and other quick vocabulary that you will find everywhere, as well as French slang words for all ages. You will find them all in the blog post for today's lesson. French people don't really know how to deal with French learners. It's probably not limited to French people and maybe we know what we should do, but don't bother. Whatever the case, the thing is, you might not get as much help as you think you need from French people themselves. For instance, if you ask them a question in French, they do often answer in English. Even if their English is barely understandable because they want to practice their English or they want to be nice. If there is more than just one French person, they will probably start quickly to start speaking French at normal speed, which for you is way too fast. On the plus side, French people are not that bothered about your mistakes as you think. We all know that French is difficult because we had to learn it as well. And it's flattering that you're trying to learn. So don't worry about your mistakes, keep speaking French. 
They don't want to be your practice partners, but they want to know you as a person. That's why French courses and official French practice partners are so useful. Thankfully, if you're visiting France, you'll find some of them quite easily. And whether you're in France or abroad, you can even join programs online, such as my own, the French Conversation Club. Otherwise, you can always ask French people to slow down. This would be, vous pouvez répéter? Could you repeat, please? Vous pouvez répéter? Vous pouvez répéter? Or, vous pouvez répéter plus lentement? Could you please repeat more slowly? Vous pouvez répéter plus lentement. Be careful with the word doucement, because doucement can mean slowly, but most of the time it means more quietly, and this is the opposite of what you want. As I said earlier, at the beginning of your relearning journey, you should not run away from classic methods. Basic grammar and vocabulary will help you build solid foundations so that you can build the rest upon that. But at some point, you can start to mix and match. And this way, you can also run away from things that actually bore you. You're probably learning French just to have fun. So why not make learning fun as well? By which I mean, pick resources that interest you. If your main hobby is le jardinage, le jardinage, gardening, you can take up gardening books in French or even look up the fun French TV program Silence, ça pousse. Silence, ça pousse. If you're all about la cuisine instead, la cuisine, cooking, you can find resources like Des recettes de cuisine, cooking recipes, Des recettes de cuisine, online in French, or relax with Le meilleur pâtissier, the French bake-off show, Le meilleur pâtissier, or Top Chef in French. Top Chef, and many other cooking shows. Or if you're only into, let's say, l'histoire de l'art, l'histoire de l'art, art history, then you can try your hands with French podcasts from French public radio, France Culture, France Culture, or even jump into des cours en ligne, online classes, des cours en ligne. Many, many great museums in Paris, such as le Musée du Louvre, le Musée du Louvre, or le Grand Palais offers them. Again, you will find all the links mentioned here in the blog post for today's lesson. My point is, if you don't care about business or sports in French, just skip them. And if you love them, dive into those. You're not at school anymore. You have a choice. And if learning French itself is a source of fun, then I have tons of fantastic lessons for you. And you can start with something fun, such as the five mistakes to avoid with French bread. Just click right here on your screen and I will see you in the next video. Allez, à tout de suite.